So hello there, uh, my name is Alan Campbell from the Richmond News and this is our Meet Richmond's Olympians series. Today we are joined by Richmond race walker and Olympian Evan Dunphy, who is a Canadian record holder over 50 kilometres and as such you will be competing in the 50 kilometre race in Tokyo in just a couple of weeks time. Uh, Evan, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and how, how are you feeling today? Not too bad. Had a had a bit of a tough workout this morning, so just gonna you know recover from that. Put it behind me and set my sights on the next one. Right, right. You say tough workout. Well, why was that? Um, body just didn't do what I wanted it to to do today. But I was asking a lot of it, so um, yeah. you know, not not too surprising. But uh, yeah, we're heading. We're certainly heading in the right direction, at least. Yeah. Uh, this is just sort of. I'll dwell on this for about another hour or so after this, after we talk, and then I'll set my sights on the next one. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, for the people who are watching this. This is an indication of how modest Evan is. He actually uh, offered to rearrange his workout this morning for this interview, and uh, not not it's not the Richmond News's place to to interrupt an Olympic athlete's uh, preparation. So we uh, we agreed to work around Evan's schedule, but just a little indication of uh, of how modest uh, this athlete is. Uh, and if anyone uh, knows the history, that was shone through in 2016 in Rio uh, uh, when an incident occurred near the end of the race. Uh, without getting into too much detail, uh, Evan didn't pursue the appeal. Is that correct, Evan? Yeah, yeah. Sort of a bit of back and forth, and then we left it. We left it. I just felt like the right thing to do. Sure thing. Yes. And we won't go over that too much. But with that in mind, though, will that be on your minds? Come come a couple of weeks time in Tokyo at any point in your race. <laughs> uh, you know, certainly with uh, you know in Doha, my world champs in twenty nineteen. Um, same thing sort of happened. One kilometer to go, I was I was flying by the athlete in third place, and you know, in the back of my head, there was this little thought that said, "Just make sure you give him a lot of room when you pass him." <laughs> so certainly, if I find myself in a battle for you know any position with uh, with a long kilometer to go i'll just make sure there's a wide berth between me and, me and that athlete <laughs> that's funny well we'll look out for that and hopefully that will be the case hopefully that will be the case not the bump hopefully you will <laughs> be in a position to yeah ho hopefully i'll be far enough ahead that uh, it won't matter at that point right with this morning's workout aside how are your preparations been going going really well so uh about three four weeks ago i set i broke my own 10 kilometer canadian record uh walked 38 39 for 10k and then uh, just six days later, broke uh, my teammates' uh, 5,000 meter record. Um, so the speed is there, the endurance is coming along. So those pieces are all, all getting put together and now just putting it all together on the right day. Nice. And, and are you doing anything before you fall? When do you fly out, by the way? Uh, leave on the 18th of July. So a few more weeks here. A couple of weeks, okay. Are you doing anything specific at home that you wouldn't normally do in terms of preparation for something like this? Yes, yeah, certainly. This is very different. Normally be uh, at altitude in St. Moritz, um, you know, just getting the benefits of training in the, in the thin air. Um, so not doing that this time around, but certainly the heat will be a big factor. So we're working with the Richmond Olympic Oval, getting to use the uh, the hot yoga studio there to wow. do some heat work. I'm going to be using the, the Minaru uh, Center for Active Living to use their ice tub or their, their cold tub to, to do some pre-cooling stuff like that. So just, you know, we have tremendous resources here in Richmond that I can tap into and an amazing community that's, that's you know, reached out to help. So um, it's a, definitely a different preparation, but um, I don't think it will be, uh, you know, any any worse than, than I'd be doing uh, otherwise. Okay. And you, you mentioned hot yoga there. Just using the hot yoga sto hot yoga studio. Uh, we're gonna put a put a bike in there and 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 okay. do some do some spinning. Yeah, I'm not a big. I can't touch my toes. Yoga. No, you're not doing hot yoga then. <laughs> no, no, I, I can't touch my toes. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. And uh, when you when you fly out there, uh, how long do you have from after arrival to your actual event? So we will go to the track and field team is doing a camp in Gifu, which is about 250 kilometers south of Tokyo. Um, so we'll be there for, I'll be there for about 13 days, um, doing just again, last minute preparations, getting used to the time zone, getting used to the heat. And then I head up to Sapporo, which is where the race walk race is. So that's about 800 kilometers North of Tokyo. Um, and then I'll be there for another five days before the race. So all told it's about two and a half weeks before my race. Oh, wow. Um, and then I race and then we, every athlete has to leave within two days of competing. Okay. And when is your actual event? What date? 
Uh, August 6th in Sapporo, so August 5th back here at home. Oh, that's near the end of the games, then, eh? Yeah, it's the, the second last day, I believe. Okay. And then uh, for, for our viewers here, on I think they would be curious, on the day of your event, what do you actually do? What does that look like for a 50-kilometer <laughs> race walk? So I race at 5.30 in the morning. So it's basically wake up, uh, have some food, and just try to get the body ready. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much the day before is where all the work is done. You know, I spend a couple hours preparing my drink bottles, um, getting all the stuff ready that I'll use for pre-cooling. So getting towels wet and in the freezer, um, you know, this, that, and the other thing of, of just sort of those last minute preparations, putting my, my race number on my, on my singlet, wow. um, all those little things will be done the day before and then try to get as much sleep as possible. And, <laughs> you know, as much sleep as you can, when you have to wake up at, three o'clock in the morning yeah, yeah. and uh and that uh, go from there do you do you have anything to eat before you race yes yeah so i'll take in you know a big bowl of cereal um if uh, whatever sort of available i'll probably take some cereal with me just super simple sugars just something that's easily digestible uh, and then during the race i'll also take in about 1500 calories so that's through sports drinks and through gels and stuff like that and are they available? Where, where, where do you, you, they don't, you don't walk with them, right? No. So, so we race, the race walk happens on a two kilometer loop. So uh, we're doing 25 laps awesome. around one. We have a station every, every loop where our, we can have team members who can hand out stuff. So they'll hand out, like I'll have two hats. One will be in a freezer and, and every lap will come around and switch my hats out. So I have a cold hat uh, to keep my head cool, um, grab a drinks bottle, grab a gel, maybe, um, all that stuff. Uh, and then we also have just cold ice water stations yeah. also around the course to, to be able to drink and pour on ourselves to stay cool. So a, a cool, a, a new frozen hat for every loop. Yeah. Yeah. Frozen hat. And then a little, uh, in Doha, I had a little neck scarf. Mm -hmm. It was basically just women's stockings <laughs> tied <laughs> off on the end, <laughs> filled with ice. And I just wrap those around my neck. Yeah. It's, Super low tech, but it works. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever works for sure. And uh, so that my math is correct. That's 25 hats then? Uh, well, so we'll just, we'll rotate oh, through. So I'll have the same okay. two hats. I'll, I'll throw one off, grab okay. a new one. They'll grab that hat, put it in the freezer. In the freezer. Yeah. The freezer. And what the temperature is going to be like during the race? Um, so it's right now it's about 24 degrees there. So it's not too, too hot, but it could get upwards of 30 into the, even the mid thirties, um, plus a lot of humidity. So mm. the humidity is what really, really, um, causes you to suffer because your body just can't yes. sweat as much. Yeah. Um, so we raced in 32 degrees and 78% humidity in Doha. So hopefully it's better than that. Anything, anything less than that will be, uh, will feel cool relative yeah. to that race. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, for people not to au fait with a 50 kilometer race walk, how, how long is it going to take on average? Uh, somewhere in the three hour, 45 minute range. Okay. Um, yeah. Give or take a couple minutes. And so 5.30 a.m. start on August the 6th. The 6th. And so what yeah. time is that here then, do you know? Uh, so that would make it, uh, what was that? So 5.30, uh, 2.30, I think 3.30 in the afternoon start time on the 5th back home. And is the recent heat wave here, is that, you've been training in that, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, got a, got a good 42K walk in on Sunday um, in some hot weather. So certainly, I mean, it's been devastating for, yeah. in, in general, but, um, but specifically for my preparations for Sapporo, it's been nice to get out and get a couple walks in. And uh, that, was heat. that in Richmond? That was yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And are you getting recognized in the streets at all when you're training? <laughs> it's <laughs> absolutely. It's absolutely insane. Like I've, I've gotten used to over the last few years, you know, having a handful of people every time I'm out there, I do the same loops every day, okay. pretty much. So you see the same people, but in the last month, uh, it's been at least a dozen people every time I'm out there, um, you know, go Evan, good luck in Tokyo, you know, all this stuff. And it's so cool. You know, I'm so lucky. So many athletes, we have so many great athletes in Richmond, but a lot of times they're, you know, they're in they're they're you know, they're at the oval in, in, on the climbing wall or they're, you know, in the, in the arena playing badminton or something like that. The fact that I get to be out there on the streets, um, just up in my community and going through the neighborhoods, uh, I'm so lucky because I get to hear and see that support um, every day, which is really cool. Yeah, I must, must uh, a little, give you a little bit of inspiration. 
Oh, a hundred percent. You know, even what you, even like t- today's like today when you're really struggling and you go past someone and say, you know, go get them in Tokyo. You just can't help, but, but have a smile on your face. And lastly, what are your chances? You know, there's a, you know, if I can stand on that start line and, and, and be in my best possible shape and give it my all and have a good day, I, I think there's about six of us that have, that have a realistic chance of, of winning a medal. So all I can control is what I do. Um, if I go out there and have my best day and a couple other guys falter, then, you know, I'm certainly in there with a chance, I think. Well, Evan, on behalf of everyone at the Richmond News and all our readers, we wish you the best of luck and bring back a medal. (laughs) I'll do my best. Thanks so much, Alan.